Do you want to know how to Von wrap your hood? I'm going to show you how to do that today. What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. I have a new, never before seen product sitting right beside me. New brand, new product, new finish. Never seen it before. I'll introduce that in a moment. And I'm going to be using that product over this Audi A4 hood with extremely bad paint. Tons of stone chips. I actually sanded the car down. It's my car. Uh, sanded it down. It's been resprayed. And as normal with resprays, the paint is usually pretty crappy. Uh, is what it is. Now, if you guys are looking for extremely detailed videos, 4K point of view, open discussion board, forum where you can ask questions, post pictures, and so forth, more professional vinyl wrap videos, beginner one-on-one section, business one-on-one section, the link is in the top corner and in the description below where you can sign up now and get one month free. Really have nothing to lose if you really want to get into this. Let's move into what we're actually doing today. Now, this hood, we're going to measure it out. It's pretty large. We're looking at about 60, 65 inches in width, but we're gonna have to cut a little bit extra. We also have the length. The length is pretty long as well. Most standard vinyl rolls come about 60 inches tall, and this is it right here. This product is called, or the brand is called V2, and this is like a honeycomb carbon fiber. I have no idea how this is gonna look on the car. I've never used it yet. You're gonna find out how this works today. Uh, I was explained a few things about this company. Uh, you can actually buy this on Amazon, so I'll link it in the description below as well. Um, so Amazon will sell this to you, and other, brand, other companies will sell this to you as well. There are other distributors out there. I think Vivid is also one distributor, uh, and, and several others. This is a private label company. So basically what they can do is they can make you anything you want, essentially. This is what I was told. They can make you anything you want. Did you hear me? That's pretty crazy. Um, I don't even know where I would start as far as having my own final made. I don't even know what I would make, but um, the possibilities are probably pretty endless. I mean, you can get pretty creative with this stuff. Uh, this is, it's going to be directional since the, the honeycomb shape is somewhat longer than it is wider. Okay. So you do want to run this directionally. I mean, is this good for a whole car wrap? I have no idea. Could be, could look cool. I have no idea to be honest. Someone go out there and try it. The the film itself comes with a PET liner right here on the back. This is a plastic release liner. So the reason why I was explained that this comes with a PET liner is because the film is a little bit more fragile. Okay, so I guess the process of making this, what I was explained again, the process of making this type of film made it a little bit more fragile in order to get this unique texture and unique finish to it. It's all right, we're gonna install it. We've got plenty here and we're gonna give it a whirl. Again, never been seen before until today. I've measured out the hood already. Uh, I've cut the piece of film that's on the side of the car over there. You can probably see it at 69 inches or so, uh, giving myself a little bit extra end to end. You're gonna need some isopropyl alcohol to wipe down the hood. I've wiped down all the underside edge and everything. I also wanna bring you in before I actually do anything because I want you to see what this looks like as far as the paint condition goes. It's really important to see the stone chips and you can see that guy right there, it's very heavy. You can see that one right there, pretty bad as well. There's that. And maybe when I was sanding, there's a bit of a wave in the paint. I don't know. There's another huge one right there. Tons, okay? All these little speckled white areas, these are all stone chips. Every single one of them are all stone chips. This is bare metal. We have some heavier ones over here. And we'll show, I'll show you all of these at the end when we're finished wrapping it. Anyways, I wanted to show you that. Mainly on the front end, you can see the bumper is in really rough shape, but that's all right bought the car knowing that the paint was in rough shape and it would give me an opportunity to do this video or do a video like this. Uh, so can you wrap over this kind of stuff? You're going to see what that looks like. You can, by the way. So that being said, let's get onto it. Let's put that over there. And I've used compressed air to blow away the contaminants on the surface should be very pure, should be very clean. We're gonna take our film and bring it over to the car. Now let's grab it and bring it right over here. Okay, try to keep it from creasing or wrinkling. And we're gonna slide that up right there. You can see that I'm wrapping the other side of the car. It's going in a gloss, gloss khaki green. It's more of the color. We're going to come past this edge over here, make sure that we have plenty of space. I'll bring the camera in so everyone can see everything in as much detail as possible. 
Now, I'm approximately three inches past the passenger side. I'm going to be approximately, oh, approximately three inches past this side as well. So we're looking pretty good as far as where we're sitting. I don't need to put any more magnets in the car, so I'll just take these, put them on the window, and we're going to cut some of this vinyl out. I'm going to cut some of the vinyl out right in the window area. I don't want the film sticking to the actual window. I want to be able to lift the film very freely and very easily. So let's do this. Let's grab, let's take our knife. You can use a vinyl cutter as well. I find with a PET liner, it's a little bit easier to use your knife. Um, sometimes the vinyl cutters, they just don't do a nice job when it comes to uh, trying to cut away extra film simply because of the PET liner. That PET liner, again, is just more for stability. Uh, it does help and it does aid in the development of gloss or super gloss films these days. And those super gloss films is, one of those super gloss films is what I'm installing on the side of the car. Um, so the PET liner creates or makes it so that there's much less orange peel in the actual film. Let's move the camera over, give you guys a better point of view of what's happening here. I'll bring you more into the center and get you situated in a good spot. I don't, again, I don't want to cut any scenes out. I want you to see everything from the time I started the video to the time that I finished the video. This way you can see exactly what the stone chips look like and know that I didn't play any magic tricks or anything fun, funny like that. We're going to take our PET release liner and we're going to roll some of that off and we're going to place the film back down just above the top corner. Now I'm only about an inch past the top corner. We don't need a lot of extra vinyl up there because the film sits very flat in that area. We're going to peel this area off and keep it rolling. If we keep it rolling nice and smooth like this, this means that we don't actually get, we won't get any creases and we don't have to heat them out. If you get a crease in the middle of your hood wrap, it's going to be hard or it's going to be difficult to heat that out. So keep that in mind. Just keep your film flat. It's going to make your life tremendously easier. Perfect. What we need to do next is we need to flatten this out a bit. So I don't want this to break. And again, I was told that it's a little bit more fragile. So we don't want this to break. We're going to take this and flatten out a lot of these wrinkles. These are these are all bad, okay? These are all not running in a direction that makes sense for us to be able to wrap this hood. So if you're starting like this, this is a no-go right off the bat. You do not wrap your hood like this. To do it would just make things much more difficult for you and um, you probably won't even get the job done. Let's lift this up. Now we want to make sure that our room temperature isn't too cold as well. So if it's too cold in your environment, the film is more likely to break. Okay, let's lift that up a bit. There we go, and let's just keep that tight. You're going to see that I'm going to come right across the middle area. Amazing. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to lock in this corner over here. I'm going to try to. The tack is not very high, which is nice. Keep in mind, I'm actually like, you know, I haven't used it, so I don't want to break it. Um, but the tack is, is nice. It's not not too strong. I'm lifting very gently right now, so I'm just really taking my time because I'm not sure how it's going to install yet. I haven't really tried to push the limits of this film. So again, we don't want to get caught down here. That will, that will tear the film. I'm just lifting gently. Ah, there we go. Okay, it released. That's what I wanted. Makes me happy. Here, we, got through, we got through the hard part, I think. Okay, take that and spread it out as nice as you can, okay? There is pliability to the film, but we're, again, we're just trying to start off with a more uniform area. Now you can see, you can definitely see, that we have an area that's much easier to squeegee and work with right now. So I'm gonna fix this up right here, and then we're going to start squeegeeing out some of the air. Let's lift this corner up. And again, I'm not certain the threshold of this film yet, so I'm just trying to be careful. Carbon, dry carbon fiber, generally, is a more fragile film. Why? Because the film has a pattern to it, and that pattern, if you get a small tear or a small run, the film will tear all the way. It'll just simply shatter, crack, or break, or run right down that line. 
Now, firm squeegee pressure is very important here. So we want to make sure that we squeegee out all of the air. Let's keep going here. I'm going to work, I don't have to work any more of that right now. It's just best practice to start from the middle and work all of the air out. Perfect. So it's really hard to see where I'd squeegee. So make sure you're being thorough and overlapping your passes. That's a super critical thing to keep in mind. You don't want to leave any air behind. Now, what you might notice is that I'm not squeegeeing all the way down to all these huge wrinkles down here. We're going to deal with those in a minute. You can hear the texture, right? So far, it squeegees really, really nicely. Looks good. Working the air out there. Perfect. We can stop there. I'm going to have to add heat at a certain point, okay? Uh, why is because this becomes a compound curve as we near the front of the hood. So that being said, if I don't add heat, then I'm just concerned about it tearing. Uh, if we don't add heat, we usually won't be able to get all of these all of these wrinkles out. So again, let's try and gently gently lift this. I don't want to don't want to tear the film or rip it. Not after getting to this point. Okay, let's grab it here. And generally what you want to do here is keep your heat gun handy. So I'm going to have, I have my heat gun right here. And you want to heat and stretch over a large area. So watch, the film is going to move. It's going to move naturally, okay? I'm going to start from that area there. Now I'm not pulling very hard here, guys. I'm just keeping tension on the film. Okay, if I pull too hard, at the beginning, then we're going to have a line of where we basically distort the carbon fiber. Carbon, dry carbon fiber is very tricky to install. I'm not sure if this is gonna be the same. I, again, I haven't pushed the limits of this yet, but my guess is since it does have a pattern to it, is that it will be tricky to install and very similar to a regular or a dry carbon fiber. Now this is again, just something a little bit different, a little bit more special here as far as the finish goes. And look at that, I chased all those wrinkles out to my left hand. Did you even see my left hand move? Nope. So we're looking good. We're gonna take this area here and we're going to expand the film outwards and just keep it nice and tight and bring it down in one pass. Boom. Stick that to the light, bumper, whatever. Let's squeegee out the air in this area here. We don't wanna leave it behind. If we leave it in here for too long, it can be more challenging. So look what happened in the middle. What do you notice? Do you notice the pattern distorted at all? Because it's not. Um, that's because we stretched over a large area. But what we also notice right now is that the wrinkles are running across instead of all that bunched up material that we had running down. It's a huge, huge, huge difference, okay? That is how you're going to be able to wrap your hood. If you have if you have material basically bunching up here in the front, you're going to have a problem because the only thing that you can do is, end, is, is you end up pulling it down. Now you can see here that I have wrinkles, but I'm going to show you how to deal with those afterwards. So let's do the other corner since this is like most of the major lifting. And if I rip it, I'd rather rip it now or tear it now or break it or whatever could happen to it. I have no idea as opposed to later. Um, what I can also do here is I can cut off the corner. Do I need to? Not really, but if you feel like this material's in your way, you can cut it off. Let's just do it. So we'll do both sides a little bit different here because we have options. Sometimes it's better to just get the extra material out of the way so you can wrap or get your hands a little bit closer or where you need them to be. So again, I'm going to lift up and make sure that I'm not going to damage this. I'm lifting up this corner over here. I mean, this whole edge, because if it's stuck to the car and I try and lift it, it could, it could snag and it could tear on the actual pattern. Okay. So I'm just pulling this way, and again, I'm being a little bit more cautious and a little bit more gentle here. There we go. You can put your hand under it. Okay. And then the same thing here, guys. Watch. Put my hand at the corner, where, where my corner was over here. We're going to keep tension on the film. We're not going to stretch it a lot. I'm just going to fix up a couple of air bubbles right that I have right there. Cool. We're not going to stretch it right now. We're just keeping tension on the film. And we're letting the film 
basically do its moving right now. Okay. Check that out. I'm not terribly close to the heat gun, but I'm close enough to cause the film to you know, soften and be able to conform or for, for us to be able to stretch it and conform it the way we want it. And again, doing this over large areas is super important. If you do this over a small area, you're going to distort the carbon fiber in a way where it's going to look really bad. Okay, so again, expanding the film outwards as we come down and around this edge here. Now I'm going to take my hands right here since the film is still warm. Put my hands over top. Let's finish that up. Just stick that right there. Bring all of this air, or get all of this air out of here. There we go. Sometimes if I, I don't know if it's dry skin or what from my finger. Yeah, it's just dry skin. Sometimes my knuckle will graze the film and you'll see some white marks. Those will come out and just wipe right out. Now, check out the middle area here. The middle area is really good right now because we have our lines running across, which means all we technically have to do is get this, and we're doing this alone, remember, right? So if we had an extra set of hands, it would probably be easier, but all we have to do is pull these wrinkles this direction. Now I have one big wrinkle right there. Let's get that one out, it's a little bit high up. And let's get that one out while we're here as well. Cool, again, just making sure I'm not leaving any air behind. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to actually add a little bit of heat to this just to soften it. Again, not stretch the film. If I stretch it at this point, we're doomed. You're, gonna, you're, you're almost 100% going to distort the pattern. So now the film, I'm not even moving my hand, guys. The film is just shrinking. I, need to, I do need to fix this, though. So let's just lift that up a little bit. Okay. Right there. And let's add a little bit of heat to that area there. There we go. Now it's just going to shrink and go away. Okay. And any stretching that I might have done, I can just take it and look, my, the film is just sticking to my hands. I'm not doing much here. I'm not pulling it, like I'm not grabbing onto it and pulling it. And again, the film is not like the stickiest film in the world. So that being said, you know, we're just using the traction of the film against our hands to, to kind of pull it. That's it, look super gentle. It's like that, I'm at the edge, like, so I don't need to pull it. If you pull it at the edge, you're doing, you're doing one of two things, or doing a couple of things. You're going to be overstretching it past the edge, which is most likely going to potentially cause failure, the film to pull back off of the edge, or you're going to distort the carbon fiber at this point, and we don't want, we really don't want to do that, because we're, we're well on our way to actually wrapping this hood and finishing it up. So again, I'm just going to take this tension, a little bit of tension with my left hand, and then just gently place that down. I'm not doing anything else. You got to learn how to use this stuff. Um, using your heat gun is a great tool. So basically all you're going to do here, again, same thing, put a little tension with my left hand, stay out of your way, wave my, my magic wand, watch, boom. Look at that, just all went away. Okay. It's all in directions and all about how you pull. Way more of that information is on my website, guys. Like there's so much stuff. It's way too much stuff. I have like 400 videos on there. It's way too much stuff for that 30 minute YouTube video. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna push in to the recess here and squeegee all that air out to the top. Perfect, didn't even have to add heat. Looks pretty cool. So obviously we still have to fix that over there. We still gotta fix a little bit over here. Uh, we're gonna check out what's going on on the side right here. Cool, let's grab this and let's start working the air out. See the sides. Let's get these wrinkles out of here. This is an interesting hood because uh, the back corners actually drop down when I when I lift the hood up. So that makes the wrapping the back corners a little more tricky than normal, um, simply because we don't have access to them. I'll show you how to do them. I'll bring the camera right in for that kind of stuff. Right now, just to give you a point of view. You'll be able to see what I'm doing on this side when I get to that side. I'm just going to add a bit of film here because I don't want to tear it or break it. There we go. Just add a bit of heat. There we go. It just softens the film. It just makes the film a little bit more pliable by adding that controlled warmth to the area. Let's go right here at this corner here. Good. 
Again, a little bit of tension with my left hand. I'm gonna wave my magic wand and we'll take our film. If it does happen to get some wrinkles in it, that's all right. We're gonna take it, expand it very gently. See if that works, not sure. But still have some wrinkles. Let's go a little bit higher here. There we go. Let's heat from down here. There we go. Should be all right now. Hands over top. Hands over top helps a lot when it comes to spreading the tension out or dispersing extra material. I'm not, I'm not pulling down, just very gently, I'm not stretching down, I'm just very gently keeping a little tension in the downward position or in a downward direction. Same thing here. I'm going to work our way right out to that corner there. Again, not stretching too hard. If we heat too much, um, it will actually allow us to stretch the film more than we should. So knowing how much to heat is important. The film should just feel soft and pliable. It shouldn't feel like melted bubble gum. If it feels like melted bubble gum, you're heating too much. And you should actually wait and let the film cool. So you can heat it until the point of it feeling like melted bubble gum, but just let it cool for a second before you stretch it. Amazing. I, I can't see any stone chips almost anywhere on this thing. Let's do this side over here now. You'll be able to see a little bit better over here. Now, I might have, can't tell, I think I blocked it off, but hopefully I didn't. I'm gonna try to work the air out here. Seems, yep, okay, it should be all right. Just give it time. I kind of blocked it off, I made a mistake here, and I sealed up this area between right here, between here and here, so it made it more difficult to push the air up. We're gonna fix up the top section right here before we move on to that. Let's peel that up a bit. Again, this is not something that you wanna be terribly aggressive with, at least not yet. I mean, I, you can try it all you want, but I haven't really pushed it yet, so I can't tell you if this is stronger than what I was told or not. I'm just being careful because I do have a limited amount of this here. And I, I, want to, I want to get my hood done. I want to be one of the, the first to have this on my car. Not that I really drive this thing around too much, but hey, hey, we're going to take that, spread out the tension, okay? Spread out the extra material. Keep a little tension on it, if you can, and that will, that will help. Okay, back here. Let's go this way. Work all that air out. It's a little bit awkward holding it with my left hand, but manage make it work. All right, let's check out, oops, PET liner slippery. Let's check out here. Let's make sure all this is good. We've got a giant bubble here. Let's grab this, let's lift this up a bit and let's get that, let that air release right about, there we go. Let's keep going, let's lift that up a little bit higher. Let's even all this out. Yeah, I'm just being a little bit more gentle than I normally would. You could, pro you could probably lift it harder than I'm lifting it, but it's just so close to the end. I don't want it to break or be an issue. So close to finishing is what I mean. Squeezing back and forth, be thorough. We'll clean up the dry skin from my hands. Let's trim off a bunch of this. Just like that. Start your cut from the inside, work your way out. Again, right here. So what you're gonna see is I'm just gonna take my hand, keep tension on it. I'm not gonna pull the film towards me. I'm just gonna keep tension on it. I'm gonna heat it. Watch. I'm gonna wave our magic wand. Oh, just like that. I'm gonna take it now and then very gently place the film down without adding 
without adding a lot of pressure or tension. Now, this, this area is good because we have some wrinkles going across. That's okay, They're, they run across the edge. So that means we just kind of pull them back down the other way. Watch this. There we go. And then these, I'm not gonna pull the film down. These will, should go straight down. That's without pulling the film down. And we have this little bit of slack right here. So I need to lift the film up slightly. There we go. And then the film, as with most films, will pre-shrink. The pre-shrinking is a really nice feature that I've come to really enjoy with certain vinyls. Um, I noticed that this film was pre-shrinking, so pre-shrinking just means that the film is going to shrink naturally from its, sorry, it will shrink from its natural states if you add heat, which gives you the ability, if you, can, if you can work it around an object without heating too much at like the edges, once you get to the edges and if you haven't stretched past them, if you heat it, the film will just shrink down and around the edges because the film is shrinking down them. Um, it's awesome. Okay, we're, we're gonna move on. Uh, let's bring the camera over to this side so you can see how I do the cut and see how I can do the corner on, on as far as the other side goes. Let's get the camera down and angled in a better position, perfect. We're going to cut away some of this film. I have too much. I have about, about three inches too much. Make sure we don't cut into our wiper blades. So we're going to lift the film. And don't, don't stick your knife out too far because it'll go too deep and could scratch the wiper blades. Just don't want to have to replace that. It's probably not the end of the world, but you don't want to have to replace that. So same thing here. Perfect. Let's get that out. Now, the trick. What do we do with these corners? We're gonna take, we're gonna take this corner right here. I actually had masking tape on this. I forgot to put it back on because um, I wrapped it. We're gonna take this area here. We're actually gonna tuck. Since this corner drops down, I already tested it. Okay, so this entire edge right down here all drops down. We have to make sure we get our film around so we can actually lift the hood up. Otherwise, we're gonna, we're gonna tear it. Now, as far as this corner goes right here, we're gonna put the film down on, around that corner in a cold state, uh, which it is right now. I'm gonna move that out of the way, that slip on that stuff. But I'm also going to squeegee down some of the middle area here. So let's do that. And then you'll see what's gonna happen at the corner. Let's heat it. You see how the film is, is going like smooth? It's, it's basically, it's shrinking down around that edge. I love it. We have no tension there. Okay, now I don't want to heat the corner yet because the corner, let's put that there. The corner needs, the film needs to come down and around the corner in a cold state before I heat the corner. And I also don't want my film touching the fender if possible, if possible. It's okay. It's probably not gonna work out perfectly as far as not touching the fender goes since it's super tight here, but that's all right. The other side will be better because I, I put masking tape there, so the film will actually slide off of the masking tape. Now, if we actually bring the camera in and I can show you more of what's happening right here on this corner, and if you guys really want like way better videos than this, you gotta just check out my website. Look at that, boom. Just boom, bang, bim, bam, done. It's just a lovely, lovely thing. I didn't do anything, I just heated it. There's nothing fancy to that. So I'm gonna take this up right now. I'm gonna show you what the corner looks like. Look at it, under my squeegee. No wrinkles, right? If you see any wrinkle, you can just tuck that down a bit right here so you can see better, there you go. No wrinkles anywhere around the corner. This means we're, we're basically ready to go on that corner. The same is gonna go for the other corner on the other side. So I'm gonna to try to give you a perspective from this side over here and let's just maybe zoom into it and see what I can show you from here. Not sure if it'll show too much, but we're gonna do it. It's always worth a shot. So let's heat, heat here. Look at, see how it goes wrinkled and then it goes straight. That's pre-shrinking, guys. How much do you have to wrap underneath this? Not a lot. All right, so this side's gonna be easier because I have tape here. So again, I'm gonna be doing the exact same thing as what I just did. We're gonna be putting that corner down around 
that area in a cold state, and when I heat it, it will just shrink down and around. Now this fender to hood area is tighter, so it's actually harder, more difficult for me to get the film down and around. It's all good, we're getting it. All right, so I can see that my film is looking good. Maybe I'll just move the camera over since you guys can't see anything from that angle there. And get you guys into a much better position here. Let's go this way. Cool. Let's get you right down there. I would have trimmed it, but I want you to know that I'm not cheating when it comes to wrapping over those stone chips and stuff. All right, let's do it. I'll zoom in for this. Now again, you can see mostly that my squeegee is sort of down and around that corner a bit. You can see that, cool. It's just that piece is in your way. Let's heat it. Boom, done. Film, then you just use your finger over top of it and the film just does its thing, just shrinks down and around it. Thought I saw some air there, it's all good. All right, what we need to do is we need to trim up to about here because when I lift this hood up, it's going to get caught on the fender and it's gonna rip my wrap. I know, because I already had the hood wrapped. Not with this stuff, with uh, something else. Come underneath the corner, see what I did there? My knife is running right underneath the corner. That keeps those corners super, super clean. Now normally I don't cut this way, this is a little bit awkward for me. Um, I'm trying to stay out of your way. And I'm just gonna go about halfway here. Cool. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna, and, and you can see the film, like this film has actually gone shiny. It, it's actually, in other words, lost its, it's lost its finish, look. I, I just melted it, I heated it that much where it, it basically melted. That's like, I'm like basically forging the film around the corner. Now bring this out very, very gently here. We have to figure out where I started my cut, which is right there. Let's cut this off, and we're good. Let's pull that out of the way there. Now I'm gonna, just gonna lift the film off of this edge for now. I probably still have to do it again afterwards, but I'm just gonna get it going because I want to make sure that um, it's loose for when I do lift the hood. So I need to, I'm going to lift the hood and finish up all the other edges and also give you guys a really good perspective on what all that looks like. Let's go around to the other side. So let's bring the heat gun. And let's come and do the same thing right here. We're going to cut right underneath the hood and get that piece of scrap out of my way. That's just the texture of the film that you're hearing, that nice zippery kind of sound or Velcro type of sounds. Come underneath the corner again, right underneath this edge. That's why I tucked the film down and underneath there. See that? Now this gap on this side is much, much wider between the fender and the hood. Car's been in an accident, so whatever. Why it's repainted. Easy to adjust if I really wanted to. Best part about this car is that once I'm done with it, I'll wrap it in something nice and I'll sell it. Okay, so we should hit this area with heat, but we're gonna have to go over everything with heat anyways. So just keep that in mind. You should always hit up your corners with some heat afterwards, uh, but we have to go over everything anyways. So let's lift this, get all this area up. And then I'm going to lift the hood, but I'll put a box down so you guys can actually see how I'm doing the edges and everything else. So let's get this up a bit. Am I stuck somewhere? Should be. A little bit there. Okay. How are we doing over here? A little bit stuck there. And we don't want to ruin our wrap. And you'll see that corner dips down, right? So that's why we did that corner first. 
I'm gonna grab a box and we're gonna put the box underneath the hood and I can, I'll be able to show you more on how we're gonna be doing these edges. Perfect, love it. Now, let's get this back into position as far as the camera goes and start showing you what's happening with all this stuff. Perfect. What we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up all these edges first. So that's step number one. We're gonna heat the film more from the top position like this and we're gonna do several passes with our glove on and your finger or your thumb, whatever you prefer. The film, you can see it's very smooth, it's dropping down and around, it's really nice. It's perfect actually. The corner here, heat it, boom, just push it. All this, add a bit of heat. Push all that down and around, down and around too. Looks really good. All right. Let's keep going along. You see, everything's nice and smooth right across this edge. Super unique finish. Look at that. How do I feel about it? I don't know yet. It's different. I'm not like a, I'm not a flashy person. Uh, I wrap my car in chrome all the time. I'm not like a carbon fiber person, I would say. So, I mean, you can get creative with this stuff. You can wrap whatever the hell you want with it. Let's go around this side now and show you what's happening right over here so you can see everything. It's been a while since I did a YouTube video. It's been like a month. Beauty. Okay, once, once we do all that, we're gonna now cut. This is all about being thorough. And if you're thorough, your job will always be well done. So if you're not thorough and you cut corners and you cheat, your job will more than likely cause you an issue down the road. Now I'm running my knife right on the underside edge. Look at that. Beautiful. It's going to be the most straight cut you've seen. Try and stay out of your way. Okay. Take your time around the corners. They're a little bit more finicky to come around since the knife doesn't like to curve. There's a little rubber seal in there. There we go. We have one more step after this to do. And I also have to show you what the stone chips and everything look like. So I'm just not, not going to move the camera for this last little bit right here. I'm going to finish this off really quick. And then you'll get to see what this looks like. All right, last step is to go over all of this with heat. Not all of the surface, all of the edges. If we don't go over these edges with heat, we're just asking for problems. So going over everything is very important. Now, this corner's up. I can't really reach it very well. So I'll have to put it back down to get it, but I can get this entire back edge. And basically what I'm doing right now is I'm more or less post heating and ensuring that this film is locking in or sealing up at all these edges. Point blank with the heat gun and I keep the heat gun moving. I mean, you couldn't even tell if this hood was sanded down, to be honest. I can't see anything. I, I can see the stone chips when I'm very, very close, but they're not nearly as bad as they were before. You probably would have been able to see them from the first perspective where I had you guys started, um, which was way back there. So again, going over everything with heat. This is how you ensure you do a good job. This is done. So let's open it up since we're already here. And let's check out the underside edge to see what that actually looks like because I want you to see how clean the edge looks. It's like, it's like the hood has a carbon fiber cap on it. 
Okay, this is how clean the edge looks, all the way down. All the way down and around. I mean, you can't even really see the edge from here, but it does wrap around, just so you know. We're looking at a very minor amount. You can go around further if you like. I personally just like wrapping it like that. All right, let's go around here. I can show you this corner better since the, the trim piece for this is gone. So you'll be able to see this one better. Here we go. And that was simple. Oops, I don't want, don't want this to drop in my hand. Uh, that was simple to do, right? I'll bring you really close in. We're looking at about, I don't know, two inches away. Super close. This is the finish. So it's like a satin, satiny gloss. I wouldn't call it a gloss, but it's kind of like a satin finish. Looks pretty cool. Let's check out the stone chips and see what those look like. So those were all like all the white speckled dots. And I have, yeah, I have my dry skin that, that kind of hit the paint or hit the wrap. That's a pretty wild looking wrap. Uh, the glare off of with the camera is pretty cool. All right, so no, no stone chips here, none, zero, nothing. Uh, even if I didn't do a nice sanding job, you can't see any like waves in it. I, I don't think you can. I just see a lot of re refraction, a lot of light. And it's really interesting how the light is reflecting off of this. I've never seen anything reflect light like that as far as uh, all my years of doing vinyl wrap goes. Like, that looks crazy. So that's cool. That would be pretty cool if you wrapped the whole car, I think. I don't know. Like, what do you think, guys? Just let me know. Um, front end, this is where the really, really, really heavy ones were. There's one big one right there. You can kind of see it. There's another one just right there on the very edge. There's more. I just can't really see them. I know there's some over here. This is a really deep one right here. It's a really, really bad one. That was a really bad one. All right, and there's another one over here too. See, I'm having a hard time seeing it. I have to actually just feel it. There it is, right there. If you guys can see that or not. That looks trippy, wow. Uh, the, the light reflecting off of it is pretty damn cool, actually. I've never seen light reflecting off of a wrap, like I said, like that before. Um, maybe that has something to do with the actual, I don't know, the honeycomb effect or hologram effect. I mean, it's not a hologram, it's more like a honeycomb. Uh, but that's, you know, that's the hood wrap in a nutshell, guys. Uh, I think it looks pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. I think the whole car would look pretty amazing with it, with, in it with the light reflecting off of like this. Maybe I'll try it, I don't know. I don't have that much to do the whole car with right now, but maybe I'll start doing a fender and a door with what I have left and see how that goes. Uh, again, this was full-blown detailed video to show you guys how to do it, introduce this new brand. Again, this product is available in the description below. And don't forget my website, ckraps.com. That's available in the description below and the top link in the corner. That's pretty much it, guys. I hope the video was informative and detailed and showing you how to do this. I look forward to doing more videos for you. Again, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Take care.